My name is uh, Naomi Naidu. I'm from the beautiful city of Durban, from a small town called Tongat, which is near the airport, uh, the King Shaka Airport. Um, so growing up, I always loved puzzles and solving problems. And uh, well, it was no surprise that uh, uh, when I heard about civil engineering, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. Uh, so upon completing school, I I went to the University of KwaZulu Natal and I um, graduated as a civil engineer. I had a bursary with the Department of Transport. So uh, when I completed uh, my studies at the university, I worked with the department for a short while. Um, I was seconded to NIDA Consulting at the time. Um, thereafter, I I spent. I, I moved to Goba, which is now called Hatch. Um, there, I got a lot of very good technical experience, um, and while there, I also uh, obtained my professional registration with EXA. Um, I then uh, moved on to BMK Consulting Engineers. It's a much smaller company. Uh, I moved in as a as the water and sanitation manager at first, and then later on as a technical director. Um, I think the fact that it was a smaller company, uh, I learned a lot in terms of how a business is run, the business of consulting engineers specifically, uh, because in a small company, you are your support staff, staff, whereas in a bigger company, you have the support of admin and other technical specialists. Uh, in a smaller company, you have to do everything yourself on a project. Uh, which was good because it uh, got me to understand um, how everything would work from the beginning of a project and every aspect, not just the technical aspects. Uh, then in 2016, November 2016, uh, I founded uh, Pink Africa Consulting Engineers. So we're going on to five years uh, at the end of this year. And uh, it's been exciting. A lot of new aspects that I've picked up in terms of business. Um, it's, it's been challenging at times, but uh, I think it's been so beneficial in terms of my growth um, and not only business, but also technical aspects and communication and, and uh, a very sort of well-rounded approach. So um, yeah, so this is where I am now, 15 years later into my career. There has been a lot that uh, has happened over the years that has improved how women are deceived in the industry. But I think at the moment, there's a lot of subtle biases that, that are still prevalent. And I think it's um, generally in the form of the value that's placed a, uh, upon or, or the importance that uh, women engineers, the value that women, women engineers um, contribute towards the industry is very much undermined. Uh, for example, um, lots of times women are not even given the opportunity to, to get into leadership positions because it's assumed that they, they're not capable of doing so, merely because of uh, the difference in which men and women interact on a project. For example, uh, women may ask uh, a lot of questions. It doesn't necessarily mean that she's not confident in what she does, but Oh, in fact, she's actually more uh, trying to get a better idea of what she's actually doing. Men, on the other hand, which is, this is not in all cases, but um, are generally much more confident when they approach uh, a project or a challenge. Um, and this sort of perception gets carried forward you know, to a lot of cases. And uh, even though women are completely capable of doing so, it might be portrayed in that they are not capable of doing so. And um, if they are given the opportunity to, to uh, you know, perform in a leadership role, it's almost like everybody's waiting for them to fail or to do something wrong. Um, and it's, if something wrong does happen, it's if that mistake hangs over her for the rest of her career. Whereas I have seen in instances where uh, the same in, the same mistakes may have been carried out by men, but um, overlooked as part of project life, and that's how it, how it goes. And they've given multiple opportunities. Um, that sort of 
uh, behavior can't actually be pinpointed. Uh, so it's difficult to actually uh, identify and call out in, in industry because it's, you know, there's a lot of ways to get around it. And that's something that I've, that's been spoken about by a number of female engineers in leadership positions um, and the pressure that they feel to perform where, whereas the male counterparts don't feel that similar sort of pressure all the time. Um, so I think that's one of the major issues that uh, women generally face. Um, and I think another major issue is the lack of female mentors, mentors um, where we would normally, men would not, I, okay, personally, I've had a lot of male mentors and um, they've been so beneficial in my, to my career as well, but not having that female mentorship to be able to talk about certain aspects uh, definitely makes it a bit lonely being a female in the industry um, and a bit discouraging at times. And I think that's what also uh, drives women to leave the engineering field and pursue other, uh, other careers. So those I think would be the major ones that I um, have come across in my, in my discussions with many other females as well. My wish for engineering is that we can that we are able to perform as engineers without the limitations of uh, financial limitations and uh, um, you know political influences and just be able to serve our communities the way that we intended it the way it's intended to be. So that is what I would like to see in the future. Advice for young women in that want to uh, join the engineering field. It's an amazing field. I think if you have a passion for, um, you know, for maths, for solving problems, for uh, to contribute towards the betterment of society, then this is, this is the groundwork that, uh, uh, this is the ground level at which we actually contribute to society. We provide the basics uh, to a community. And this, you know, engineering is a beautiful, civil engineering specifically, uh, is such a beautiful, beautiful profession. It's, um, it has the ability to, to change lives, not just lives, but whole communities and, you know, swing the economy uh, in a different positive direction and, you know, contribute towards the betterment of the country as a whole. And um, to be a part of that, there's, it, there's no greater fulfillment than to, to contribute in that sense. Um, but also, in, in, together with that, there, is, there are issues in the industry that need to be uh, addressed and are being addressed at the moment. So especially around, uh, around it being a male-dominated profession, there are females, there are a lot of females in the industry and uh, now a lot of female engineers that are becoming mentors as well. And um, I think the important thing when you come in is not to feel the pressure to uh, change yourself to suit this industry. You have a valuable contribution that you need to um, you know, give to this industry and uh, don't try to feel the need to change who you, ha who you are to fit in. Uh, and that's really important because that's what we're trying to change at the moment. And um, we don't want it to seem, we don't want young, um, passionate, energetic female engineers coming in and changing who they are because then, uh, then you're just another male in the industry. And uh, we need the female engineers with a different sense of thinking and the, the diversity that they bring into the solutions that we offer, we need that in the industry. So I would definitely encourage you to join the industry, uh, but don't change yourself when you come in. Okay, so one that we've been involved with, um, with my current company, uh, it's been in Melville. It's, um, it's a sewer, it's, it's a small community there that had no sewer reticulation that was put in. Uh, so we got involved with the design. We identified uh, the, the, the households that we needed to serve and um, went back to the drawing board, put a design together and um, uh, communicated with the, with the locals together with the municipality, uh, got the input on what sort of solutions they were looking at um, 
And then together with them, with uh, by employing local labor as well through the construct in the construction process, uh, they were very involved throughout the project. Um, we designed uh, the sewer reticulation um, and also contributed towards the treatment works design as well that was serving this reticulation. And uh, it was implemented and commissioned uh, at the beginning of this year. And uh, now the community has uh, proper waterborne sanitation. Um, and it's made such, an, such a difference in their lives. Um, I think it, uh, it was for our company, my company itself, it was one of the fewer projects that we've actually taken from the beginning to the end and uh, got a chance to look at um, the before situation and then the end result and what a difference and, and the impact that it has made in the lives of uh, the community that it's serving. So that was one very interesting um, uh, project that we worked on. And then we've worked on some uh, planning projects where we looked at um, with Itikwene municipality, where we looked at what projects or what future developments are planned in within the various regions and uh, identified which water reservoirs and pipelines are serving those uh, areas and um, planned in terms of the upgrades for the various reservoirs and pipelines and um, pump stations and, and you know, uh, associated infrastructure. So that was really exciting because you get to see from a planning perspective uh, how you plan. Uh, so this extended, the planning extended for 25 years. So it was exciting to see how, you know, everything linked up together. And uh, it, it might have been a different department within the municipality that looked at a housing project uh, that would come online uh, maybe 10 years from now, it, once they start the planning pro, 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 process. And um, we from a higher level had to look at it together with the municipality uh, and how we would plan to uh, service these communities that and new housing developments that are, that are coming up. So that was really exciting looking at uh, how the planning process happens. 